Hey everyone, it's Bing Giraffe and I'm here with a randomizer attempt for cassette beats. I have enabled here both the tapes break permanently and the defeat is game over so it's gonna be a challenging custom mode and all the randomizer things so like monsters, types and moves. In addition to that, I have also scaled up all the AI smartness and level scaling difficulty because I do want it to be a challenge. I know it's not easy, I know it's a little bit mad. So let's get started and it's time to choose a starter. We get an option between a goldfish in a max suit or a cat with a broken television head. I don't love Kitelli, I love Pondwalker. Both are plastic so that doesn't factor, but I choose Pondwalker. Kaylee transforms into a water type path pole and I love path pole. As we start our adventure, our first official battle is against a grass type spring heel. And with the experience from that battle, our Pondwalker learns magnet which I really love with starting grade, it's a really good technique, so I'm happy to have it. Next, it's another tutorial fight with Dominoth, but it is Glitter type, yay! Which, you know, it's nice, we got a Glitter type, I love pink. Obviously, it's my name, hi! But yeah, we defeat it and we get the gliding. As soon as we get the glide, it's time to start the real adventure. There are some steel type jumpkins which we can't really battle because we don't have any jelly to activate them, but we do come across a water type pluckability, and if I recall correctly from my main game, pluckabilities are hella strong, so I'm really excited to have one of these in my team. The next battle is against a grass type nevermore with a pluckability on its side, and I kind of forget how powerful Magnet is and it's disadvantageous because it gets attacked by both of the enemy monsters and the tape breaks. I didn't realize it right away, I captured Nevermore and just before I got into the station, I realized I have permanent breaking on for tapes and Pond Walker is lost forever. So our starter that I really liked is now gone. Yay, after a good start, but we still have four tapes. We get into the station, which is, you know, it's typical. We have Kaylee Fusion unlocked, and our first fusion is Padmore, two of my favorite mons, Padpo and Nevermore. They're really, really cool. I love the blue feathers, I love the green hood, I love the long tongue, and we beat Morgante. It's typical, but I'm happy that I got it with a fusion that I really like. After resting, it's time to head east to meet Eugene. Eugene has a glitter type Burnus. Glitter type is a bit odd to use, but we get through it. We fight the landkeepers, we make them glitter, they make us glitter. It's a whole chaotic thing. We beat them with no problem whatsoever. After defeating the landkeepers, it was time to re explore and we headed towards Leader Ayante area. There was an Alls here which looks quite normal, but it's actually glass type, and when we battled it, it was accompanied with a grass type trap work, which I love the design, they were included in one of the major updates, and I'm really intrigued by them, so I decided to just capture the trap worm. I can't say why I decided to only capture one of them and not both, but hey, that's the decision I took. Next to leader Ayante, we defeated the Rakruther and the other tamer there, and they were both quite straightforward battles. I think 2v1 are relatively easier. I didn't sweat. Underneath Ayante's building, there is a cave which I walked into, and I accidentally stepped on Trapworm. Now, I know you already battled Trapworm, but realizing that I can step on a random encounter, it adds to the danger level because now I have to be careful where I walk. I did try to capture the electric bulletino that it was paired with, but unfortunately they did kill Kaylee and I was not gonna do a 1v1 and so I just fleed. And that does raise a question, should I be fleeing? Nearby Meredith, we do find a double wannabe with two water column vipers. Again, it wasn't a very complex battle and we did defeat them very easily and our trapper learned Braves for Impact, which I think is a very powerful sticker. After talking to Meredith and coming back, I do see a rogue fusion where she was. It's time to set rules for myself. Am I going to battle all rogue fusions I see? 
And I'm like, listen, it's a challenge mode, why not? Yeah, let's do it. We get into the fusion and we are fighting an Orkin, Old Seer and Jump Confusion and they are Glass Steel types. I definitely underestimated how useful All Seer is because it's wonderful 7 sticker put Kaylee to sleep immediately. That's not good. The sleep status effect is very, very powerful. In a couple of turns, I try to use Brace for Impact by Trapware. It does decent damage. It also shatters the glass of the All Seer. I had this wonderful idea. If I'm not that strong, Let's fuse together, Kaylee. I really realized how bad an idea that is when I was asleep. I couldn't do anything. I was asleep, I was confused. It combined the statuses, I couldn't do any attack. I think All Seer is one of those powerful ones where fusing is a disadvantage against it. After a long tiresome fight, I did try to use rewinds to heal up, but there was no way out of it and yeah, game over. With that, I'd like to ask your opinion and advice for my next custom mode. Should I impose rules like having to forcefully fight against rogue fusions or am I allowed to sleep? And also how do you handle capturing? Like do you do a Nuzlocke kind of thing? Like only one per square? Uh, yeah, I'm very interested to how people play their custom modes and I'd like to take that opinion and play again because I'm really excited for the custom mode and I'd like to eventually win out. With that, I urge you to subscribe. I do play a lot of Cousin Beast, other monster taming games like Powered. So stick around and I'll see you around next time. Thank you for watching.